Hello YouTube, it's Barbara Jean. Uh, I have a couple of dreams I have to uh, um, put out there, put out on YouTube land. <laughs> uh, the first dream happened a few days ago. Uh, I had to think about it some. I had to do some praying and meditating about what happened. Then I had one just uh, a few minutes ago. So I just kind of woke up from a, a, a nap. It wasn't really a nap nap. It was I was sitting in my chair and I felt the presence of the Lord. So anyway, with this, this other second dream I want to talk about was given to me by the Lord. In fact, I think both were. But the first one happened a few days before Friday, this last Friday, where, which was February the, whatever it was, the second or something, when it felt like all hell broke loose before the Super Bowl. Um, it was uh, a pretty intense couple of days. But anyway, a couple of days before that, I was talking uh, to a sister on the phone. But previous to that happened, um, a phone call woke me up from a vision that I was having. And the vision was, I, I was being picked up. I was picked up by the Lord. I didn't see him. I just felt his presence around me. Uh, he picked me up and we uh, he raptured me, basically. He raptured. It was one of my, I think, my very first rapture dreams. I probably have had others, but this is the first I remember. But uh, I was being raptured off the earth, and we were going at a very, very fast rate off the earth. Um, I kind of glanced back. It wasn't really intending to look back at the earth in, in a way like, oh, I, I really long for what was on the earth. It wasn't that. It was just to see where I was and where I was going, basically. So I looked back just to see I saw the earth as a globe receding very, very wet rapidly behind me. And then I looked forward. I mean, I didn't barely even give the earth a, a second glance. And I looked forward and I was being zoomed through the universe very, very quickly. And we were approaching Jesus's um, it was kind of like we, he was flying me like Superman, if you will. I could feel him behind me, but I couldn't see him. Oh, got something in my eye. Um, and so we were zooming through the universe at a very, very fast rate. And as I saw his kingdom approaching, it looked kind of to me, from what I said, it was very, very vague. It was this river of gold, and there were crystals over it. It was still in the distance, but for some reason I felt like I could touch it. So I asked the Lord, I said, and I reached out my hand, I said, can I touch it? Can I touch it? Can I? Because I reached out my hand in order to touch his kingdom. And the feeling I got was not yet. <laughs> that he was, it, this was, I guess, maybe a test to see if I was ready to leave the earth or or what it was but then that basically that's when the phone call happened and I woke up well I guess that was all planned because I needed to talk to the sister excuse me I'm still sleepy <sighs> so excuse me um so I that was the end of the dream and my feelings were is that it, we were getting that close the Lord was maybe testing to see if his bride was ready to go if she's ready to depart, I think she is. I think she's ready to go. The church is ready to leave, but there's still a few things that needs to be need to be cleared up because this is the dream I had next. This is I just had this dream, and it had a lot of interesting images. A lot of things I, some of I I still don't quite understand. Some of it is um, a little confusing, but one part of the dream I do remember quite clearly, which I think was kind of interesting. Um, I was in a, what looked like, a, I guess, a harem of some sort. There were portals. Uh, I was on one side of this um, room, and there was, a, uh, there was an invisible barrier between me and there were a few, you know, a few other women in this room with me, but on the other side there was an invisible barrier. And for some reason, these guards had made some kind of triangle portal that some people could crawl through these women who were on the other side of this portal could could come through it and a couple of women did come through through this portal and this one woman I knew was trouble as I was standing there looking at her I knew she, she was trouble 
And I thought, oh, great. Now I'm going to have to deal with her. <laughs> That's what I thought. You know, as I was standing there watching this, these women coming through, there was about two or three of them that managed to get through this portal. And uh, this one, I thought, oh, great. I'm going to have to deal with this one. And sure enough, she, she comes sliming over to me. She was like a, she was like a, she was disgusting is what she was. She was kind of um, sleazy and like a, like a horror of Babylon. She was like, she was disgusting. And she came up and she tried to lick my face. And I, I thought, oh, great. I'm going to have to deal with this woman. So she tried it again. And this time I grabbed her around the neck. I grabbed her around the neck. And I said, look, I'm not the woman I was. You can't deal with me like this. I will not put up with it. And I practically throttled her. I didn't really uh, like shake her or anything, but I was pretty close. And this woman, I think she got pretty fearful because she realized I wasn't going to put up with any kind of mess from her. And uh, so she left me alone. So she kind of <laughs> went and, and I went to go deal with a couple of um um, in the room, there was seemed to be a mess of some sort that I had to use a broom to sweep up. I had to sweep up what was the the last the last mess on the floor with this broom. In the meantime, I saw this woman approach, but she had a suitcase in her hand, and out she went. She left the building. Okay, um, so that was kind of interesting. And this is the verse that came into mind with that that particular dream was. Um, the horror of Babylon, mystery Babylon. And that was Revelation 17, uh, starting at verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of, inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of a fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head was the name written Mystery Babylon the Great, the, the, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Um, okay, let's see. Is, is that all I want to say about this? I think that's all I really need to say right now. Uh, so anyway, in my, my dream, the interpretation of my dream was that I believe that the bride still has to stay here for just a short time to clean up the last little bit of lies and deceptions that still have to be dealt with. There are still, still a couple that Satan has his, you know, his, uh, he's got some hidden things going on that, that the bride has to uh, sweep up. And uh, this mystery Babylon, this, this harlot spirit, which has been in the church, is exposed. <laughs> the bride has throttled her, and she's heading out. You know, the church is not going to tolerate her. So she's going to, she's still in the world, this, this harlot that's in the world, that's drunken with the, you know, the wine of the, the blood of the, of the martyrs and the saints. Um, this false religion, this false spirit that thought it can get away with being in the Lord's church, but cannot because the bride has exposed her and she is on her way out the door. So anyway, that's what I believe. That's what this means. So um, I'm going to leave that at that and I will talk to you in a bit. I still have some more things to say today.